What's up, people? YouTube, and welcome to my channel. It's your boy David Nemo Harrison here, and today is we're back with another Throwback Thursday. Now, usually I'm playing a game, usually I'm playing a game, but now this is gonna be the second week. Either I react to a video or do a little game quiz. But today I'm reacting to the top 10 GameCube games of all time. Well, this guy's list. Now, the video I'm using, the video guy I'm using, name is Nathaniel Brandy. We'll check him out. His link will, his video will be in the description. And I'm curious what his top 10 list is. I'm a huge GameCube fan, so I said Throwback Thursday. Uh, I didn't really have any game schedule for today, so um, figured just get in to see what else people think about old school games. So let's go, bro. Paper Mario: Thousand Year Door. So those won't be on the list. I apologize in advance. I just simply never got around to playing those. But without further ado, let's -a go. Okay, we play Mario. Is actually one of the GameCube launch titles. Ooh. That's NFL 2002, baby. Really? No other game even stood a chance, man. Well, uh, okay. I guess come on now. Mansion is a bit better. Any OG? Touch. Anyway, seeing Nintendo make a Luigi exclusive game and spotlight it as a launch title for the GameCube was a very left field move. Perhaps this was done because they were worried about. Yo, the fact that they got multiple games and Luigi and they did a look good job. Buy it? I don't know. That's just a theory. Now, I know that some aren't that big a fan of Luigi's Mansion, but I honestly think it's a really solid and it's still a good game, though. I, recently played through it for a top 10 last I never played it, but it still is a good game. Watch, but I just love the concept. Mario has been kidnapped for a change, so Luigi has to go into a spooky mansion to save his brother. As you would expect, the house is filled with ghouls and ghosts, but thankfully, EGAD equips Luigi with the Poltergust 3000 to suck them up. Poltergust so 3000. The mansion, sucking up ghosts, solving puzzles, and collecting treasure. The soundtrack is pretty pretty fantastic too. It really alludes to the fact that you're trapped in a creepy mansion. And of course, with that Nintendo charm, Luigi will sometimes hum the tune while he's creeping around the mansion. It's honestly brilliant. You rarely see games do stuff like this. Catching ghosts has to be my favorite part because it's not as easy as just pushing Yeah, because basically it's Ghostbusters to meet Mario. Soul to life. Well, Luke, Mario and Luigi. And then there's a struggle to suck them up entirely. Every room you encounter is filled with tons of rich details and interactive environment pieces, which was actually a pretty mind-blowing feature back in 2001. The reason this game is so high on my list is because I don't really see myself going back to it for maybe another few years, but it is one that I recommend everyone try for themselves. Alright, alright. Of the bigger Nintendo franchises, Metroid is the one I've played the yeah, least. Yeah, well, I should be higher up. Zero Animal Crossing, Fire Emblem, and Xenoblade, but whatever, whatever. You get my drift. Oh, I never played Animal Crossing, so I want to know. But really? Xenoblade, though? Xenoblade is amazing. It's an amazing game. Oh, Lord. A few hours in the Metroid Fusion, but that was several years ago. What? Until recently, at least, I finally tried Metroid Prime to see what all the fuss was about. And man, was I missing out. Metroid That's Prime is the worst transitions from 2D to 3D that any game franchise has ever seen. Outside yep. of Zelda and Mario doing a pretty outstanding job, too. Well, At the beginning, yeah, because they're the hallmark for that thing, right? House, but then an explosion knocks her against the wall and she loses all of them. Then you're left with, well, pretty much nothing. But that's a great thing because it incentivizes the player to explore the huge rich worlds to find all her powers again because you yep. slowly gain her powers back it allows you to become accustomed with each of them as well and from there you explore that's actually land, a shoot down metro prime is, is one of my favorite games of all the time hands down the exploration is fantastic the whole game is very immersive thanks to all the small sound effects added from the environment and the fact that you're playing through samus's helmet the whole time now a big part of the game is scanning stuff which i honestly wasn't that big a fan of. Sometimes scanning objects allowed you to make progress, but other times it just felt kind of useless. Maybe I'd be more into it if I previously played Metroid and wanted to learn more about the lore, but no, really? I felt it was a bit excessive. And the backtracking. I, I actually really enjoyed it. I know people complain about the backtracking a lot in games like this, but I thought it was really satisfying seeing how jam-packed the world was. Like, I actually enjoyed getting lost. And that's going to happen a lot, let me tell you. Because the world around you feels mm, so, it's alive, so big. exploring it is really fun. I think, one, I think is Metro Prime is one of the first games to ever do that. To have a very more open world. More simple, but that's than, than like a lot of other games. I understand why this or Metroid Prime 2 would be lower on others' lists. This uh, Slatham has the it. first Mario Party game I ever played. Mario Party 2. 
Can you, uh, can you put the OG Mario Party? Yo, Mario Party literally broke up houses because of how competitive people got. I remember playing with my cousins. Then my cousin and my mom, little brother. Oh, you used to get so heated playing Mario Party. Sure, the boards are fully rendered in 3D now, and you can team up in pairs with party mode, but it still feels like classic Mario Party. I yes. especially love the items that you can use. My favorite has to be the Mega Mushroom. Not only do you go giant, Mega you can roll additional dice, and if you pass anyone on the board, you smash them into the ground with your and, feet. And, yep. It's so satisfying. Let and they lose coins. Mini games are some of my absolute favorites the franchise has ever offered. You've got so many greats like Three Throw, The Great Deflate, Dungeon Duos, Trace race cliffhangers and of course the fingers suck i hate cliffhangers alone puts this game on the list i've never enjoyed a mini game so much in my life the pure ingenuity of pages crashing down to top players with small holes to escape blows my mind still to this day and look at that box art it is just popping with enjoyment i don't know what it is but this is like my it should be higher up then my opinion it should be very higher up and then it's on my list while I've never played the first Pikmin, I've had a blast playing Pikmin too. Yeah, this game is terrible. This game is terrible. Kind of game that I was gonna enjoy. Twenty hours later, I'm still enjoying it quite a bit. In Pikmin 2, you take control of Captain Almar and Louis and go around on a day-by-day basis collecting Pikmin, fighting hidden artifacts. Oh, this game is terrible. This game is literally a waste of space and time. Because the Hakatate Fright is no. dead, and that's the ultimate objective. And for how cute Pikmin 2 is, the game itself is surprisingly deep, especially for a Nintendo game. The no, it's Pikmin not. Are categorized by color and all have different features. The blue Pikmin can swim through water, the purple are slow but incredibly strong, the white can destroy poisonous clouds, and so on and so forth. Let me tell you, the Pikmin you create oh, basically my God. become a new family member. Because when one of them dies, it is the most guilty, gut-wrenching feeling of all time. And this game is not no, that easy. This, this game really sucks. With which Pikmin you use to attack and how much you use. The puzzles are really clever and well thought out too. They aren't impossible by any stretch, but they do require a bit of thought to figure out. In terms of replay value, you'll be playing this for a long time, seeing how much no. content has been jammed no. into it. There's no, no, you won't. You won't. Don't listen to that guy on that one. Caves in a two-player battle that I didn't get to try. But alas, I feel like this is another game that I probably won't go back to for some time. Just Good. like Luigi's Mansion. But seriously, I was addicted to this one, and it's a shame Nintendo has yet to release Pikmin 4, at least during the time this video was created. Some of you may not believe this, but people weren't the biggest fans of The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker when it first came out. Yeah, I'm yeah. not joking. People uh, criticized it because of how cartoony it looked. I mean, I don't know about yeah. you, but so looking Zelda at has been taking hits. Scarlet Princess on the GameCube, I'd say visually this one has yeah. aged much, much better. But enough talk about the graphics. Let's get on with the gameplay. The Wind Waker is a lot like the other Zelda titles where you run around discovering new areas, whacking enemies with a sword, finding mm. things to blow up, solving puzzles, and the whole mm. shebang. I especially love the controls in the Wind Waker. Movement feels so crisp and it's a lot of fun attacking. All the items you'll use are a blast. I especially love gliding around. I hate, the I'm sorry, I hated this game. So much fun. I know One time I hated this game. Having to travel across the sea so much, and I can completely understand that complaint. But honestly, the sailing really makes the Wind Waker stand out above the other Zelda titles. You truly feel like you're going on an adventure when you literally have to sail from island to island. And the music accompanied with it just makes it all the better. There's a reason this was remade in HD, even though I wouldn't say that was completely necessary, but still. Uh, game server. Number five. All right, here we go. Hell yeah. Now we're getting to the real bangers. And I'm probably going to get crucified for not considering all the games above as bangers. But that's okay. I'm used to it. Okay. Some it was, was so simple and set okay, so satisfyingly I fun. I to at least once a year, if not more, because it's just yes. that fun. The gameplay is simple. You control a monkey and have to navigate yourself around stages to reach the goal. Except instead of I think this is back when like a lot of the um like the ball games like this, like similar to this, were so addicting. 
like in Monkey Ball 1, if you want to unlock Master Mode, you have to play all 50 Expert Stages and you could only lose a few lives. Yeah, now that's just a joke. In Monkey Ball 2, you just need to build up experience and you can rack up 99 lives and you'll basically be good to go. Plus, there's way more mini games, including some of my all-time favorites like Monkey Billiards. There's also a story mode, which really isn't any different from the normal game, but it comes with the most cheesy cutscenes you'll ever see, so that's a plus in my book. The greatest part of the game is the controls and stages. The yes, is yo, position fantastic. ain't the word. It works on the dime, and it needs to because the stages can get insanely difficult. I mean, look at this. What? What even is that? Like, honestly, I, I, I don't know. And also, I gotta give a special shout out to Monkey Ball 2 because this was the game that launched my channel back in 2011. That's right. I used to have Monkey Ball 2 Let's Plays, and it was that series where I started to gain subscribers. But those videos have been removed and put on my second channel. But that's besides the point. Go play Monkey Ball 2, or at least the first one if you haven't already. I know Resident Evil 4 was a multi-plat game and it's been ported to like a million consoles, but hot damn, I just can't get enough of this. I uh, ain't for at least three times, and I'm I can't play Resident Evil. I can't. Shooting down zombies with Leon is some of the most fun that could be had. On Resident the Evil, I don't know. Res Resident Evil for me, freaks me out. Sure I don't like horror games as a whole. I, I really don't. Is it the freaking chainsaw guys? Is it El Gigante? Is it the merchant? Is it the dreaded village? I don't know. Now the control is it all of the above? Like a yes. Third person shooters, and that was actually oh my god. The stiff controls make the game scarier because it's not quite as easy to aim and fire. Plus, having limited ammo forces you to be very conscious of where you shoot and how much you shoot. And can I just say, this is still the only zombie game that has zombie dogs that genuinely creep me out. If you've played the Labyrinth level, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Even navigating the menus is fun. The sound effects when you swap out weapons or move inventory around mm -mm. is so satisfying. Mm -mm. It nope. shouldn't be this much fun to move things around a menu, but it is for some reason. The story is pretty cheesy, but that's exactly what you'd expect from Resident Evil, and I wouldn't want it any other way. I could honestly go on for hours and hours about how great this game is, but sadly, no, 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 no. the top three. Thank you. You knew Double Dash would make it onto the list somewhere. It's one of the more unique Mario Kart titles because uh, the ability to drive with two characters at once. It's not just a cosmetic feature. Each character has I don't know. special items. To me, it was, like it was, Luigi yeah, it was good. It was a good game. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's Mario Kart. You never go wrong. I just wasn't good at it, so I, I hated it. Played against my cousins. Always got destroyed. And new to the game, uh, that's why frustration, frustration to choose from, each with their own unique speed, acceleration, and weight stats. But, um, there's the all cup to Mario and Donkey Kong God Key when it comes to um partners. Hasn't been implemented into the newer Mario Kart titles. Like, what's up with that? The controls are definitely different from the other games, seeing as they're much more sensitive. But once you get used to them, it's one of the most mm -hmm. ideal ways to play, except there's no way to jump. Like, what? Double Dash also has some of the best Mario Kart tracks of all time, including <laughs> stuff like Waluigi Stadium, Daisy Cruiser, and DK Mountain. The local multiplayer is also fantastic. The only thing that even compares to this is playing battle mode in Mario Kart 64. I've had an uncountable amount of great experiences and moments playing Double Dash with friends. Heck, you can even mm -hmm. both share the same car and take turns driving and using items. That is the most ingenious co-op I've ever seen. And we haven't even gotten right. to battle mode, which includes Bob bomb blast yes the best mode ever you can hurl bombs at your friends for points like it just doesn't get better than that okay i'm soon to the wind waker super smash bro oh well super smart sunshine a few people didn't like how different it was and that it only stuck with the beach theme and now jump the oh uh, yeah he went to the n64 it tried to be like the n64 because it's so different if only eh. everyone knew that in 2002 we'd get five 2d mario games that all look and play exactly the same, the same. but those times are over the present is now and we're gonna talk about one of the best games ever made most notable about whoa 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 you holy crap Come on, you ain't gonna make that statement and act like people ain't gonna get triggered by Try again. That game is not the best game ever made. It's not even the best Mario game ever, ever made. Everybody knows that's Super Mario on the N64. Get that straight, sir. 
are they refined to death? Some might think they're a bit on the sensitive side, but once you get used to them, they're incredibly versatile. Jumping and moving works on the fly. The new space mm. jump is a hoot, and we haven't even talked about the flood pack yet. This is a nozzle that can transform and be used in different ways. Like the hover nozzle lets you hover through the air, the rocket nozzle I shoots you into the sky, and the turbo nozzle lets you sprint really fast, even across mm. water. Because Nintendo limited themselves to the beach, every level is filled with creativity. You've got the hotel, the pier, the beach, and I guess this is like a vacation. Home? And the really jumble sure. storyline. I've gushed about this game more than enough times. Let's just get on to number one. Let's go. Game that I've played consistently the most. Super Smash Brothers. In fact, it was Super Smash Brothers. I played on the GameCube. Super Smash, Smash Brothers. Play. It's <laughs> can't go wrong with this. It's the reason people best, call GameCube controller is the main best GameCube game the ever game made. Yeah, a few of the characters are broken, but I don't oh, man. Fun. And then there's like fun ain't the word. Modes too. You got adventure. You never stop playing. And it's gone to the time. Test of time. The home run contest. I should have all these sports organization about it. I feel like this video was just like pro material back in the day, but it's still so relaxing to watch. And look at that menu. Like hot mama. It's so clean oh, and just oh. beautiful. And the music. Oh, it screams epic. And I know that comes off as kind of corny, but you know it's true, son. And them stages. Oh, oh, they're so banging, dude. You can't uh -huh. tell me you haven't played Hyrule a thousand times because you most certainly have. And I haven't even mentioned event match. Favorite character so, of um Super Smash, Smash Brothers, Meta all the new characters like you, Meta Knight, Mars, Mr. Game and Watch, Bowser, etc. And just look at that opening. Fer favorite Super Smash. Why is it still one Bro, of the all the time. Meta Knight, Meta Knight, Meta Knight. All right, let's start back Thursday for this week. This guy, this guy basically, um, his list, everything, in my opinion, everything, um, before, what, I would say everything before one, you guys go be look at, yeah, that list is all sorts of jumble mumble, you got some good games, you got mixed with a lot of bad games that are not good, so, with that being said, next week should be, I should return to the regular gameplay, uh, for Throwback Thursday, as well as, if you like this video, please, leave a like below, and as well as, leave a comment, comment your favorite, um, GameCube game, I would like to know, I'm curious, and, if you, um, if you're new to the channel, you want to help support me, it would be very much appreciated, if you destroy that subscribe button, as well as destroy that bell icon, so you get notified when I upload a video, but anyway, it's been real, YouTube is your boy David Nemo Harrison. Sign us next time. Peace.